Hello, people. I finished a book. Black Elk Speaks. Uh, this is not typical reading for me. I got this one in Pinckney, Michigan, where we were filling up bags, and, and they, they only charged 10 bucks for a bag. We were getting, like, fucking 15 books in a bag. Uh, it wasn't too bad. There was some spiritual mumbo-jumbo in there. And, I don't know, it just never ceases to amaze me that that people can uh, accept the hallucination as reality. Uh, not just the one who hallucinated, but they can tell it to other people, and they will also accept it as reality. Uh... The book is written by John G. Newhart, and uh, Mr. Newhart went and interviewed some very old American Indian gentlemen, uh, guys that were out west, that uh, were actually in on, in on a lot of this guy Black Elk was was around at uh, Little Bighorn. He was around at Wounded Knee. He had friends that were also there, and his friends were there while Newhart was was interviewing him, and they they all spoke up. But a lot of the book is is taken up by his visions, and uh, uh, I don't know. It just seems to be a common thread among indigenous people that get colonized because the ghost dance it, it has always reminded me of uh, around Cape Town when the, when the British were there and the, and the British were, were putting down the local tribes, the Bantu and the Zokso uh, I'm sure I butchered that pronunciation but but they came up with this thing where they had to kill all the cattle and then and that would make the white people disappear. And of course killing all the cattle just made things worse. And, and part, of their, part of this guy's vision there was that uh, bullets would turn to water and nobody would be killed by them. And, and of course, you know, it was disastrous. And, and the ghost dance was, was disastrous as well. The coolest part of the book was... They interviewed, they got first-hand accounts from uh, people from the various Sioux tribes that were actually there at, uh, at Little Bighorn. That was really cool reading about that. I just zipped through that. Uh, I, and I'm going to take their accounts at face value because, because they weren't claiming to be brave, you know, fearless people. They, 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 uh, they were pretty truthful in what they were saying about how frightened they were, and, and a lot of them didn't even get to the to the point of action. Uh, let me get to my notes here. It only took me three and a half days to read this. 298 pages, and it really wasn't even that, because at the end of the book, there was photographs, and there was photocopies of of notes that Newhart's daughter took, and uh, it's not typical for an author to number those pages, but those pages were numbered. It was first published in 1932, if I understand that correctly. There's a foreword and a preface, and there's another guy that writes the foreword, and he warns the reader that in subsequent years, uh, Newhart has been accused of substituting his own words and maybe putting things in there that, that Black Elk really didn't say. Uh, I've got written down here, good read, large type. And uh, that, that's one of the reasons why I zipped through this thing, because I'm getting old and I can't see that well. And uh, the large type really helps me. And I've also got written down here, Calavala. 
uh, the Calavala is like this Finnish Bible. And I tried to read the Calavala at one time, and I got about halfway through it. Those stories in the Calavala are pretty interesting. But once it gets to, like, songs and poetry, uh, the Calavala just repeats shit over and over. And, and this does it, too. Uh, it kind of reminded me of that. Uh, second paragraph, page five. And this reminded me about of Herodotus. Uh, this they tell, and whether it happens so or not, I do not know. But if you think about it, you can see that it is true. Uh, he says that a couple times in the book. And, and just Herodotus, a lot of times when he was relating a story, a story that maybe Herodotus doubted the truthfulness, he would say something similar. He, he, he would say, uh, you know, I leave it up to the reader to, to decide whether this is true or not. And then I have the entire page of 223... Ah, Black Elk and a lot of other uh, Native Americans, they, they, they join one of these shows, like like uh, Wild Bill Hickox thing, and, and they actually tour. They go to Paris, and they go to England, and, and Germany, and Italy, and uh, he can actually, actually gets stuck there for a couple of years. He is not a happy man. He eventually gets back. But they meet the queen, the queen of England. When she came to where we were, her wagon stopped and she stood up. Then all those people stood up and roared and bowed to her. But she bowed to us. We sent up a great cry, and our women made the tremolo. The people in the crowd were so excited that we heard some of them got sick and fell over. Then when it got quiet, we sang a song to the grandmother. That was a very happy time. We liked Grandmother England because we could see that she was a fine woman and she was good to us. Maybe if she had been our grandmother, it would have been better for our people. And that, that there may be an example of, of Newhart, you know, adding that last sentence. Maybe it would have been better. That's all I got. There's not much in here. I'm reading another book right now. And I don't know, I'm like 50 pages into that one. I did go to King Book today and spent a lot more money than I wanted to. But that gives me more stuff to read. Thanks for watching.